What's a submarine and who invented the first one? Well, nobody's quite sure. But some people claim that submarines, ships that go under the water, were invented as far back as 322 BC by Alexander the Great, that great warrior. They say that he made a huge bottle and put himself inside it somehow or other, had himself lowered over the side of a ship and managed to penetrate the enemy harbour. Well, nobody's sure whether that's true, but we do know that in 1620, a Dutchman by the name of Cornelius van Drebbel did invent a submarine, a ship that went under the water. He started off with a rowboat. He put several rowers in it. He put holes in the side of the boat for the oars to go through. Then he covered the whole thing with leather. Now, around the holes through which the oars penetrated, there was also leather coated in grease. Now, he put some weights or ballast in the boat, sent it down under the river, told his rowers to row like mad. They tried to, but unfortunately, the water came in through the holes at the side. They ripped the leather off and came to the surface and said, Cornelius, your submarine's a failure. However, in 1776, an American by the name of David Bushnell successfully made and demonstrated a one-man submarine called the Turtle. It was a container, roughly spherical in shape, and at the front, it had a handle. The person inside would wind the handle, that would turn a propeller or screw and take the thing forward. It had a rudder at the back and also it had tanks at the bottom, which were buoyancy tanks. They had mixture of water and air, and these allowed it to go down or come back up again. Now, Garrett, a man by the name of Garrett in 1879, built a submarine on the same principle, but it was much bigger. It had buoyancy tanks, but this time it had a steam engine to turn the propeller and drive it forward. Now let's see if we can change a toy boat into a submarine. Here it is, plastic boat. It has a clockwork outboard motor at the back. I've wound it up, put it into the fish tank, let it go, and it trundles along at the surface because the propeller moving around is pushing water out the back and that in turn drives the boat forward. But it's sitting on the surface. To change it into a submarine, we need to add weight or ballast that'll take it down under the surface. What I'll use is this big lump of plasticine or modelling clay. We'll put it underneath the hull there and attach it by means of a large rubber band. Now let's see what that does. Well, it takes it down further, but it's still not quite under the surface. I've made a hole at the back of the hull, and I know that if I hold it under here and shake it around a bit, see those air bubbles coming up? That means air's coming out, water's going into the hull. And now, yes, look at that. Now the plasticine plus the water that's in the hull is making it sit just under the surface. So it is a submarine. So I'll wind up the electric motor once again, the clockwork motor, I should say, and we'll see if it can move along as a submarine under the surface. Yes, there it is, it's moving along. More slowly than before because there's more resistance from the water than there was from water and air before, but it's now operating as a submarine. Now, it would be a little bit inconvenient if every time you wanted to come up, you had to get out and take the ballast out, throw it overboard. So what submarines do, of course, is to have what Bushnell invented, a buoyancy tank. Here's a model of a buoyancy tank, or you can think of it as a submarine if you like. It's a soft drink bottle that has a mixture of water and air, and I've adjusted the amount so that it sits at the surface. Now, to get it to go down underneath the surface, we need to put more water in, less air. So through the red tube, I'll suck air out of that big air bubble there, and water will come in through the blue tube at the bottom. Watch this. And so the whole thing becomes denser. It's almost denser than water, not quite. And when it's denser than water, the whole thing sinks to the bottom. That's a submarine submerging. And of course, in a real submarine, you don't have somebody puffing through a tube you have tanks of compressed air which force air into those buoyancy tanks. Now what happens when we want it to come back up to the surface? We reverse the process. What I'll do this time is to blow air in through the tube. That'll put air into the tank, force water out through the blue tube. The whole thing will become less dense. It should come up to the surface. Let's see if it does. Sure enough, our submarine rises to the surface. And as I said before, this buoyancy tank idea is used in all sorts of things. Not only the modern submarines, not only nuclear-powered submarines, but also it's used by scuba divers as well. They have buoyancy tanks that allow them to go down and up again. So that's a little bit about submarines.